The correct time. Wer hat letztes Jahr ein Security? But who who watched Security Nightmares last year? Nee, glaube ich nicht. Nee. I don't think I don't think so. Who of you had a security nightmare in the, your family? And who of you was your own security nightmare? Enough. Ron and Frank. Now we have Ron and Frank security nightmares. Yeah. Welcome to Security Nightmares. Hallo Leipzig. I think this is the first time where I had problems getting into the hall. Uh, getting into the hall. Which issue is this? This is the. This event is now of age. It's the 18th event of this kind. And so the event can now get ready. And since October, so can everyone else too. The audience applauses. Applauds. You can also uh, sign up for mobile plans yourselves, cell phone plans and high percentage alcohols and t tobacco and consume it. And stay in places dangerous to, the, to, to youth, like this place. And lotteries, that means. Bitcoin, did someone say Bitcoin? <laughs> And subscribe to the Datenschleuder. Um, so we're the event that makes sure that everyone gets to the the final talk. So how bad was it this year at Christmas? Who um, removed the Windows XP from a computer? One, two, applause from the audience. And who wasn't allowed to remove the Windows XP this year because it ran so well? Well, then we can just go home, I guess. What I found really funny this year, we always say that you can uh, relax here a little because you don't have to support others support make tech support here but I heard that one or the other teenager comes here didn't come here because the rest of the family is here anyway and you already had them for three days and that's just not possible and then you have to think about how you can deal with that, because stream isn't the answer to everything. Who had to get rid of one virus or Trojan? Who had to remove more than 10? Oh, nobody? Oh. Mm, there's something happening. Not more than five either? Who didn't know how many it was? Ah! The method has changed. You just set the, the machines up straight from scratch. So let's start. Uh, this is a picture that my friend Pavel Meyer made. Um, he, his job is making machines be able to see, and he determined that uh, stoplights uh, to machines, they, they look like, like this, because if you take a picture of him, in, at 60 frames per second, when it's changing between red and, and 
when it's changing between red and green, it looks like this, this strange effect that you're observing now. Whoops. And, and that's, that's, what, that's what we drive our cars with. Or sorry, no, that's what cars drive us with. So the beloved rubric, 10 years ago, what happened 10 years ago? Um, citizen Trojans for more citizen participation. This is a reference to um, state Trojans But the digital age didn't stop at the political parties. And for example, there were some leaks. You guys, you guys saw that, right? How the, how the parties got hung up with that. I think that's worth a, a hall's worth of applause. The other thing in, in terms of citizen Trojans and uh, citizen participation is this Android app, Haven, by the Guardian Project and, and Freedom of the Press Foundation. Uh, Edward Snowden made some uh, uh, advertisement for that, if, I, if I'm correct. And that's... Which is the thing that would be forbidden in Germany if we would place it here? Well, let's see where that leads. I think that's one of the first signs that evidence collection systems For example, if you leave a hot hotel room, then you might want you don't know is that a no public space or not, even though you just left the, the hotel room. I think this concept of public space will we have to have to deal with that for quite a while now. Remote government. Um, surveillance work outsourcing them. They're supposed to be private persons, uh, patriotically minded pi pi private people that, that brought down Iceland. <laughs> uh, privately, patriotically minded pri private citizens. They're able to take care of their, uh, of, of their electoral systems. Um, on their own and didn't need other observers. And, and Putin claimed that it was a um, it was independent individuals as opposed to ones acting in, in, in with government uh, coordination. And so that was the point. Um, and so, oh, and excuse me, it was it was Estonia and not Iceland. Um, sup modular superworms. The, the the whole thing about um, superworms becoming a little more uh, modular, uh, like like ransomware, as we've we've seen recently, and then we have the topic of biohacking. I th I think there were some people who had Ebola on a PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and since then, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> some people on stage bowing to Frank and the other guy. Excuse us, we are pausing there in the translation a little bit because we're so confused. As you can, you can see that biohacking has made immense progress, um, as as evidenced by the people crashing the stage just now. Also, ich weiß nicht, ob die Damen und Herren irgendwie schon mit CRISPR Cas9 modifiziert wurden. I don't know if those those people have been modified with CRISPR, but I'd like like to see that soon. Uh, 
so this CRISPR thing is a, is a meta, me, method for um, for gene editing that's you can take it quite far. The FDA uh, was just warning uh, that it was trying out itself. And so I, I was hoping that we could get a little bit of that for the conference. I could imagine so many cool things like some little, um, you know, elf ears or change some colors of some things. There are lots of ways that you can kind of toy around with things. But, but for next year, that's what we hope for. Then industry IT, uh, child, child room IT, um, and hospital IT. And I recall that we were laughing ourselves dead um, with that dinosaur that we brought along. I don't know if you remember. This is a kind of play, a, a toy dinosaur that you could pet, and it would sort of hum at you. And it had a camera in it and a microphone, and it could make some little noises. And this year, the, a federal network agency um, forbid a... Um, a, 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 a children's toy. And child watches with microphones were also forbidden by the Bundesnetzagentur. And the nicest thing about it, the nicest thing I think was the thing with the Furbies. You, you guys know that, right? They they didn't stay stuck in the class uh, stuck in the past. They now have uh, Furby Connects that that speak that uh, that speak Bluetooth and it doesn't need any authorization and it plays audio files. So you can imagine where this is going. It just means you just need to get close enough to the children's rooms. And we would like uh, an audio track from y'all. So if y'all for, for 10 seconds to just chant cyber. Thank you. Be beautiful. Uh, the, the loop isn't allowed to be any longer than that anyways. Also, so toy shops, when they when they all start to cyber in there, you'll know why. You know these days, this Furby sort of seems to be the great grandfather of of something. Alexa, did you say Alexa? Alexa, tell my therapist. That's, uh, seriously, that's a thing. There are multiple. You know, and for for competing products as well, mul multiple implementations of Eliza, the the original um, sort of therapist program, and of and of course, there are machine learning based um, therapist software, so you can talk with your advertising buddy or whatever. And, and so, if you think about. The, the, the human spirit is a stationary target. <laughs> so if you have this kind of mix of therapy, therapy session and application in one thing, you see the possibility. Well, what could go wrong? The cloud pet guys also lost 2.4 million files, sound files of children, many, many users. The next thing was the cloud predictions. And the thing is, and if you sit there and predict the future and want to find out how hard things will be, then we then we think about things like row M, row hammer, things like escaping from one VM going to the other via the hardware. 
via errors in the main memory. But how does the reality look like? Well, there are ASLR bugs where nobody set up security measures. Rohammer, you, you don't even need Rohammer, just download it and have fun. The biggest data leaks were just terabytes of customer data, just a variety of things. The other thing was the laughed about iPhone, the iPhone in 2007, like, haha, an iPhone, like a phone where you can execute stuff on it, but nobody's asking for that. So, but now security experts say that iPhones are the best thing security-wise for the common customer. Uh, yeah, so this is a market-driven thing. When exploits are expensive, then everyone has the in incentives to keep them high. And so um, they have the incentive to sort of dispense them slowly because they have the. Uh, it's good for everyone who's sitting on a pile of, of exploits. And then, then I wanted to add this one too because it was so good. Biometry, buffer o overflow through smiling too wide. If, if you're, the corner of your mouth move too far out of the center of your face, what happens? Is there a buffer overflow or not? Does someone have an iPhone 10 and, and can give that a try for us? Good. All right. Oh, yeah. And then Vista slash Mac OS 10. Nothing to say about that. I mean, Vista, Vista, Vista. Vista, Vista was patched again this year with WannaCry, like that. And Mac OS 10. And since that, it had two factor authorization username and password. Aber ich meine, die, die, die Dinge gehen einem nicht aus. Ja? Sie gehen einem überhaupt nicht aus. Outlook hat ein halbes Jahr bei S-MIME Mails, also bei verschlüsselten Mails. These things never stop. So, like Outlook for a couple years with S-MIME Mails, supposedly encrypted mails, sent the, the clear text along with the message. And, the, and then the, the kick in the, in the stomach is it only happened if the emails weren't HTML. So, like, mail's how you're supposed to send them, huh? All right. Well, it's the normalcy update. A username and, 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 and password combination for a working mail account costs 8 to $15. In Germany, um, we had 83,000 cybercrime cases in 20, 2016. Um, with 51 million dollars or million euros worth of damages, I, I'm wondering where these numbers are coming from. I mean, it, does that include WannaCry and everything, and then, then the store of the 300 million whatever is it then included, and are the stolen bitcoins in there, and the you know that's the interesting question. There's this great this great joke in in Hamburg. There was um, the police took a container full of cocaine and um, and then it, they said there was four tons of cocaine was uh, put into the police of four tons of it and two weeks later there two all two tons of cocaine were destroyed. So we have something similar here. We had we had somewhere, but we we sold between five and five hundred. Sort of referring to the volatility of a Bitcoin. Um, so so ATMs manipulation of ATMs four hundred seventy six cases fifty six percent in Berlin. What's going on there? So there are. Uh, 
you see the all the ATMs and you just see them and you think these must be scamming devices, right? So you you just you you know these from other countries, but but you can't just go around there and without seeing like five ATMs, but you really you really can't resist the urge to do a scamming device. Who took money from the ATM up there? <laughs> Does someone know uh, someone uh, who took money from an ATM there? <laughs> Did it at least smell good, the money? Was it fresh? Oh, yeah. 50,000 MongoDBs. No, 27,000? No. Just just 27,000 in one week in August. It was a massacre. The DDoS attacks that were publicly documented was 510 gigabits. Last year I read something about 600 gigabit. And in private documented things we heard something about 800 gigabits so but we say that's progress in the cloud development so the typical way of uh, monetizing a service is like you sent a mail nice nice business you have there you have this the stay where you sell a lot of stuff and it would be a tragedy if the service was DDoS during that time and then let me just demonstrate that to you and um, yeah then you uh, yeah, and, and so Bitcoin is a suggested uh, way of getting out of it they give you an address that you can send, send the um, uh, send the money to. And so if the, the traffic is exactly 15 minutes and it's coming coming from uh, AWS or Azure, and because we know that people are using the free accounts uh, from these cloud providers to, to come to come together to get to pull together uh, all of that um, all, all of that uh, capacity and, and and so there's no need to pay up. And so that's the lo that's the logic of the internet these days. A, a round of applause from the audience for 100 million certificates from Let's Encrypt. And encrypted traffic in general has 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 risen to 50 percent, if if I'm correct, which is a, a great accomplishment in itself. And, and the crowd the crowd applauds again. Yeah, um, apps faking. Right, so f faking apps is a thing these days. Um, it's a thing now. So if you look at Google Play, uh, in, uh, yeah, in the Apple Store we had that too with that Ethereum thing. Um, and last year we said, we said that all app reviews are right are fake but not just not just the app ratings maybe the apps themselves are fake and maybe there's fake apps with real reviews it depends on what you can afford so a million downloads of the fake whatsapp messenger are from google play and and then this the sobering percentage of the day is that google android's google android security updates only reach about 50 percent of devices according to their own statistics if you can believe it, is, is, is what, I believe, what I say. And so that we come to the next point. Uh, statistics that you haven't faked yourself. There were at, at least two zero-day studies. And one of the interesting s numbers was that a zero-day, if it's known as that, has, has, lives, has been living for seven years. And so the vulnerability is seven years in the fields 
and use. And, and so it's, it was dis discovered seven years ago and has been used, and the manufacturer still doesn't have a patch for it. And so this life, length of life is defined as the, the, the length, of, length of life ends when the manufacturer issues the update. And I find that absurd if you look at the number of people that still don't patch the 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 number of wounds that want to cry inflicted uh, and the number of wounds that will still be inflicted because people still don't patch that Microsoft patches this and that or Google patched this and that or whoever patches this and that those are headlines that where, where I think that's nothing Microsoft makes them available, and whether they arrive anywhere or they land anywhere is another question that isn't always one you can answer in the positive. Although this passing patching business, it, it causes these these mechanis mechanisms by which their manufacturers roll out their patches on certain days, and it's developed into a kind of routine. You know, Microsoft rolls out a patch. And then people open open up Ida Pro and uh, and look out what kind of bugs were patched. And there's there's two markets. There's one for developing the the, the exploits. And then the other one is something about crashes. So the other reason uh, that people don't uh, patches because uh, software doesn't work, and so part of the part of the reason you get people to patch is keeping the quality high. And so people, there's a, there's this rumor. There's and so there's this there's this um, rumor that. The, the rumor that Apple issues the really nice emojis with the important updates to motivate people to, to update it. Sorry. And so this is, of course, a crazy conspiracy theory. But if you can find out a way to make that work for IoT, then we should be thankful to him, to someone who could figure that out. So Apple has found a way how they can make humans update. But for IoT, I think we can only make that work by fixing the light after the patch. So the light works again after the patch. So maybe you could add a, add a display to every IoT device that could display a smiling cat if you update so maybe like collectibles i think there's this a good business model yeah like pokemon patching we need a gamification of patching yeah das war computer massacre um das the voting machine massacre went on this year. So the best thing are the, are the the best part is when people start looking for a, a metaphor for this whole voting computer village thing. It's almost like when you have, uh, when you shoot fish in a, uh, in a pond with a, a Gatling gun with exploding uh, bullets. And it's not filled with water, but gasoline. So there was PC Val, and what's was the name of the other thing? If we elect, yeah, that thing, we still have to wait for it. Yeah, that's not out yet. How did that happen? Uh, you know, it was right before the federal election. election in Germany oh yeah shadow brokers 
So the phenomen, phenomenon that we have malware with weaponized exploits, where the secret service pay for opening up other people's computers, yeah, we have that under e-government because it was the weapon shelves of the NSA that were emptied. Yeah, these were zero days that will accompany us for years. Yeah, these were known for 10 years, but not to everyone. So shadow brokers make sure that these kinds of exploits are known to more people. So the, so the way this is handled, the when government malware is made public, how antivirus software adds them to their signatures or not, that has concerned us a lot this year. So the clear thing is national, national so nation states are starting to see um, antivirus engines as national assets. The strategization of and politization of the anti-malware business. And then, and then there's this um, this problem that attrib attribution is difficult, and so you've got this situation. Where this that this malware tech blog guy s still can't leave the United States, but at least he's uh, he's 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 a free man. What else? I think we should take a closer look at this. People on their Twitter accounts uh, set their region to be somewhere in Germany because then certain people don't bother them anymore because the Twitter censoring mechanisms for the, for the lo locality of Germany apparently uh, share, sh share um, their, their taste more closely because they've gotten rid of more of the Nazis. With this, the, 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 place, the place on your, that you choose for your um, social media account determines some, uh, the way that certain things about you are attached and, and we're missing some documentation there. And hey, maybe all of us want to become virtual citizens of, I don't know, maybe it's better there. Like what you have and what you don't, don't have? We don't, we don't know that. Uh, maybe you should reverse engineer that or something. Maybe machine learning could help. Machine learning to the rescue. Apache Struts. Apache Struts was supposedly the 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 vuln that was um, that was used with Equifax and then they were popped it was sort of something like Shufa in the US uh, one of the big 3 with about 150 million US um, people in the database including uh, in, in addition to ones from other countries so complete profiles Celebrate, celebrate. They are a service provider of the government. That allows the government to open up other people's telephones. So they're, f they're for surveillance and not privacy. True data richness. So, and then there were a couple of AWS buckets full of stuff 
for example, the Republicans had lost 198 million data, data rows. And how much was that? Well, that was everything, all voters. And 1.1 terabyte data of data accessible and 24 terabyte data not accessible. Well, was that a very interesting thing? Well, we can compare it to 2015. We had that 2015 already. What, what has changed? Well, for example, they added the skin color and the political orientation of the people in their database. So we see this was used for targeting and this is the direction we can interpolate that a bit. We see that ransomware also does the crypto right, like using really good algorithms, but even for for ransom, ransomwares. Crypto stuff is hard. So rather use the reference implementation because every time you do it on your own, it goes wrong. Or set in another way. So if you want crypto security f for your data with the keys of other people. It's better if these crypto malware authors didn't pay attention in the crypto lectures at their university. Right, so we see a development. The development always goes where the money is. So even two years ago, Crypto ransomware is was a good business model because you can earn a lot of money with it. But there's some funny things like in WannaCry where it didn't really work, or a couple of others where the question was whether it was real ransomware or just wiper where who just tried to erase all the data. So this is actually pretty good. So if you have the software on your computer and you don't know if it's ransomware or not, but there's no customer support and it doesn't follow the standards of ransomware, then you're, yeah, it's a bit bad. So it should, it should be there should be a good way to pay and customer support. And, and so there are certain industry develop, uh, standards have developed that which as a malware developer you should sort of follow. And outside of these industry standards, so the non-compliance, as you could say, are a kind of indication that they're total stimpa. Total idiots. And so this question isn't always that easy, because there's a lot of total idiots out there. Not everybody knows what they're doing. But this wonderful topic of customer support, and as we all know, customers are very annoying, and you don't really want to have anything to do with them. And so, and so many people are are sort of throwing themselves at at coin miners with such enthusiasm because. Um, because computing capacity um, of is used to mine coins, and so you you don't have anyone on the phone that you need to ex explain why you're buying uh, Bitcoin, and so the operations are much easier in the, in, in this way. Uh, ransomware is up to about a third. I think a third of malware is is ransomware. That was there was a study about the middle of the year, August August or something. And so I'm interested to see um, how far um, coin mining as a malware form 
uh, will do because customer service is so much easier. And so some, there have been some all these new coins. And how many of those new coins are ransomware friendly? Because if you think about it, ransom, Ransomware has certain limitations. If you think if you think about um, mobile phones, um, you can only really um, use a mine on phones in the evening when it, they're connected to power, uh, and and stuff. So, and it would be nice to do design some coins that are malware friendly. And so, the question is, how do their how do they those these coins develop? Situations where where um, your your data is only encrypted for two weeks while while we're while we're using um, your computer for mining, and we want your power too or something. Yeah. From time to time, these bitcoins are. Are take are seized, and then we have the question: What do you do with in those situations as a as a country? You can turn uh, seize things into seize things into money at some points, and so the first question is: What's it called? The <laughs> the. The, the state goes to the to the ta the taxpayer and says you should have sold that a lot later. So I asked some friends what how, what how is this from a legal sense? And so we've been talking about this a lot in in juristic circles and in legal circles. And of course there aren't a lot of precedent fall, uh, cases of precedent. And so maybe you like treat this like seize stocks that doesn't happen that much. And so, to be sure, they must. They apparently checked. What about ha what happens if the um, the when the thieves' goods are lottery tickets? And that turned out to be an analogy that they found quite apt. <laughs> and so the question is, yeah, duh, you can you can uh, you can sell it. Okay, we got to get into this now. Interesting things from more more notable things from 2017 were these Bluetooth, Broadcom, and other radio vulnerabilities. You mean the other computer in your telephone? Exactly. This other operating system with the other thing that's also all over because in all computers there is a computer inside that has a computer inside it in which there's another operating system on it. There's one of these things from Intel. Wait, let me see, let me see. Okay, I, I, I know, I know. It's about to come up with it. Okay, Intel ME. Anybody, anybody? That stands for uh, Linux Embedded, Linux Embedded? Minix embedded. Oh, Minix embedded. That's right. Or was it the Ninix engine? Okay, we can now to Tode prügeln. We we can um, beat this one up forever. The Millennium Edition. Um, Eigentlich wollte ich hierfür noch ein kleines Mengendiagramm machen. Also Bluetooth, Broadcom, also Wi-Fi. Bluetooth, Broadcom, Wi-Fi. Gets interesting in the moment where you you reach a certain penetration. The amount of of all Bluetooth and Wi-Fi um, devices. You have the vulnerabilities over here and the the and the third the third amount is how close they are to each other. And so you have to have a certain overlap so that it can jump from point to point. And when we'll reach such a point, here, here, yeah, here. Anybody's phone in their pocket get a little hotter just now? Um. Just one more sentence here. 
there is another uh, Facebook shadow profile article without the keyword birthday, birth date. There were no uh, there were no new res revelations. You know, F Facebook has shadow profiles, and what what annoyed me is there wasn't a, any anywhere in this whole article anything about birthday. It's pretty obvious what they're using them for. They're monetized, 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 monetized. The interesting thing we have this thing where we read news in the middle. And we'd rather do something other than security, obviously, but... And so there are a few things that had, like, the word censors in there. So, like, censors being used differently than the designer of them imagined. For instance, this dolphin attack where uh, those um, advertising devices were like Alexa were manipulated to do things that they weren't designed to do and suddenly Alexa orders a lot of uh, cat supplies cat litter, yeah. so so there's also the thing that these devices react to ultrasound and uh, so how long does it take to train a bat to emit the right ultrasound? So what kind of attack surface do we have from a parrot? So how long does it take to make the Furby order the cat litter? So the dolphin attack is really strange. So there's also the question is how you can get around machine learning. You just encode more things into pictures that the human can't see, but the machine can. So this was my favorite thing this year. So you know, Ethereum is such a smart contract system. The idea is that you have contracts in form of software and that should be a good idea somehow and in over the three years where where the currency has over 3.5 billion market cap and people looked at the programming lender solidity and ch checked whether you can write something that looks innocent but ha have bugs in them. So the bugs submitted were pretty boring, nothing interesting in them. Well, the public ones, right? Yeah, the public ones. Yeah. Well, which kind of crazy person, which kind of lunatic would send something in? Well, if the price is only a thousand dollars, well, you can be a little late. The bug bounty has to be like similarly high to the thing you can reach with an attack. And Ethereum isn't at this low. So the most interesting story was about this janitor who wrote the story on a block platform who tried to to get rid of the mess of bad and cheap routers so they can't be used as DDoS devices. So there was this discussion how useful it was, but that's not the interesting thing. So what happens if you let machines do that? So what happens if there's an AI who tries to attack vulnerable machines and takes them down? We're not that far from that. So maybe we should just do that. There are automatic exploit kits. So we can build that and take down systems 
that are vulnerable and on the net. I think we'll be there soon. So, this is just a data point. There was a Davos botnet with over 350,000 accounts, but it didn't really do anything on Twitter. So, this is a really big thing this year. So, the robot or the AI or the algorithm collection that goes out and attacks systems and also gives patches to the vulnerable machines that it attacks. There's an open source toolkit for that from the Team Shellfish from the DARPA Cyber Grand Challenge. So in the Cyber Grand Challenge, the task was to develop a program that attacks other programs and also produces patches for the systems it should protect. So this clears up the thing with the cheap routers. So death by autocorrect was a thing this year. There was at least one place where the autocorrect in a in word processing software in a word processing software it was, we were it was about an antibiotic that only knew one of the antibiotics not the other and corrected that word and, and so it's kind of stupid because um, it's important to have the correct uh, antibiotic because there are all these people with various allergies and stuff. And so we just we we decided to check into how how serious this problem was. It seems to like go on a, a little more a little further than that, right? Because doctors dictate a lot. And so we asked Siri, "How many people have you killed?" But she declined to answer. I find that very suspicious. And car washing streets as well. So one of the auto washing machines was tested, and the videos weren't released. So the 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 door tried to smash the car that tried to get out and if the people if the people if the door got hold of a human then they could also spray the water directly at them <laughs> So let's look forward. So in the last seven minutes, that will be hard. That will be hard. The sensor quality problem. It's good if the cameras are getting better and better. I think a few years back we had an app that allows to see the breath with the camera, with the selfie camera, that can also take the pulse, the pulse, and it can see that at at the cheeks, and the the refresh rate of the cameras gets higher and higher, and we're getting closer to recording micro expressions we see whether people are nervous feel good or bad a lot more is possible and it won't stop so the result is something like the thing with ultrasound and ad bugs so you don't know what 
they react to uh, T. So adversarial input will be will become more interesting. So things that can damage you and can be produced by a computer will become more common. So and they'll be controlled by a computer. This leads us to the topic of what is built into this device. How did how was this device built for the purpose that the thing is being used for now? So there's a nice saying: we we're on the we're on the on shoulders the of giants. Yeah. So if you use the script library here. And if we use this library over there, we can use it to determine the number of centimeters to the pedestrian in front of us. But if we include this library, we need to have internet access because the font is being downloaded from Google for the temperature display is displaying the temperature. But we can now build such a temperature display in under 10,000 lines of code. So we do stand on the shoulders of giants and can look further than others. So there's the saying, don't roll your own crypto, use a library that's good. But who patches it later on? And that's the problem. The giants aren't, they're not healthy. They only have one eye, maybe. And they have clutches. I think we are missing the metaphors here. We are not, we are not standing on the shoulders of giants but of car houses we're I think we're standing on a giant dump now the the bad story comes the bad news, the bad bad news. news comes. that's the best case scenario we've seen some great examples at this conference um, of what can happen they're g giants they're two expensive, they're too big, and there's too much. And the giant isn't even from here. You know, I, I decline giants for religious reasons. I want to be a giant too, I want to be a giant too, but you're only one meter and 30, uh, 30 centimeters, that's discriminating. So if you, if you get the idea, you can implement it yourself, because how hard can that be? implementing a, a payment system, how can that be? You could use Classic for that. It, it already exists. It works great. And Classic means that it's a classic. Classics are always good. Right. This problem of what happens when we start with machine learning and releasing it on people has been sort of following the whole thing since the keynote of Charles by Charles Thos. And there are these sort of automatically generated child videos designed for children. And we haven't, and we haven't seen the end of this. When you sort of think about the technology, te technology components of here and We've got pretty good text text to speech these days and pretty good speech to text. And so calling with a machine, making a phone call, um, the first time that happens will probably be a, a advertising call. And someone from the audience says that, that they've that's happened before already and he asks, Is that okay? Did it have understand and understanding for you? You know, you know I, I think that will fail because no one no one these days uses their phones for making phone calls. 
Ja, diese Daten sind äh, das. All this data is the oil of the 21st century, whatever they say. That was sort of the kind of things that we put up there um, last year. And so what was so great about oil, you know? I mean, we've been fighting wars about it. We sort of basically extinguished our planet over all of it. You know, the, 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 the jokes write themselves. Data or the oil of the 21st century, and the think about the wars, obviously, yeah. We're going to, like, you know, fill the ocean with... Um, with uh, with trash over it. I mean, it's the equivalent of AWS buckets. So Halva wrote something uh, nice recently. That isn't really the oil of the 21st century. They're they're more the the tap with burning gasoline in front of it, and you can. And you can warm yourself at it a little bit, but other than that, it's basically just got disadvantages, no advantages, other than other than that one. You can sort of go a little further with this. If data is the new oil, then data is the new snake oil too. And then now we're back to the topic: statistics is hard. And so, what you can read out from data, you have to be able to good at it. And so, if you if you can't do that, then you can sell all sorts of things with data. And then what's sugar in the tank in this in this metaf metaphorical sequence? Yeah, so we've got a little more here. Yeah, social media, yeah, social media facelifting. It happens these days still. There are professionals that will sort of be pretty up your... Um, your Instagram account to make sure that you look beautiful and beloved. And so alternative IDs are becoming more and more important because there are countries we, where you have difficulties um, doing certain things without a Facebook ID. And so, and so you need a, a, de uh, a, a, a uh, sanitized pay uh, Facebook profile for that. And for those that don't want to buy it, There's an app to help them manage their social score. It would be best if that was driven by artificial intelligence. I think I'm totally into the story. And the social score is being um, used to check whether you get a credit or not. And a lot of that should go into that. For example, stuff from the government. If if you didn't pay the parking ticket, that's a lot worse than if you didn't pay your phone bill. So I heard that health data should also go into this. So you ask yourself, what will be the consequences? Definitely a chocolate black market. Also, angesichts der, der Arbeitsteilung im Mailware-Sektor. So, so, for the split of work in the malware department. Yeah, the value, the value um, generation, uh, the uh, su supply chain, value chain, something like that. <laughs> And so, everyone in this value chain. Gets a little, gets a little bit of a kickback. Gets, gets a little bit. You know, there's the compliance and the the malware um, industries. They all say that this this automation is not so bad because there'll be new jobs. But we're seeing all these new things and compliance, uh, new jobs like compliance auditor in the malware sector. So new jobs being created by automation, and then, and then, um, Internet of Things, Ghostbusters. The, the, the IoT Geisterjäger. The IoT Ghostbusters. Last year we had the IoT Wünschelroutengänger. 
it's someone who finds the IoT devices that are even there. And so the Ghostbuster is like the movie, the one who catches them in a way that you can then analyze them afterwards. If there's a if there's an IoT gerate, uh, if there's an IoT device that's been infected with malware, and you want to be able to sort of figure out the nasty stuff that's on it, then you can't sort of unplug it because it's gone. All the data is gone, and so you. Nicht die Strahlenkreuzen. So wie bei 230 Volt, linke Leitung, rechte Leitung, so wie Strahlenkreuzen, nicht Strahlenkreuzen. Ne? Genau. 5 Volt, 12 Volt. 5 Volts, 12 Volts, you know, power. You have to sort of. Speicher auszulegen. You have to sort of be clever about reading the RAM of the devices, the memory of the device. Jobs gut, wo man klein anfangen kann. Ja? Genau, erstmal das Sample auf. Uh, with. Uh, with uh, with your family <laughs> so these are used job uh, needed jobs sorry i need to take away your production hall <laughs> but i <laughs> i have to keep it on uh, to keep it powered because i need the malware sample oh yeah Quantum computers in silicon. The quantum. The unknown things in quantum stuff. Uh, I think we can see progress in this, unless we have problems that we see today and don't know how to solve them. But if we can solve this, we might be able to build quantum computers with the traditional manufacturers or something that looks like and feels like a quantum computer. Let's see. So we asked around what will go wrong next year. For example, in cryptography, where will be the next apocalypse? So the things we heard were Bleichenbacher or more bad randomness and more bad randomness in hardware like Infineon and Estonia. So what's new? Nothing. The old stuff isn't empty yet, isn't used up yet. <laughs> yeah. Applause. Well, and we have the cloud exorcism has just appeared on the screen. Cloud exorcism is something in the last years we need a, 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 a bucket for devices for, for these, you know, uh, Alexis is a nice piece of hardware with all this, with a microphone and, and chips, but it has the problem of, of you know, being evil. And so you need an exorcist with a, with a cross. And it has... <laughs> so you can get rid of its bad soul. <laughs> we have something, because we don't know yet whether you can give food to family with this. Watch the talk where you can disassemble the uh, vacuum cleaner and you can, where you can see that the vacuum cleaner has better securities than some financial banks. We also asked ourselves how do you, do you get rid of the cloud and the vacuum cleaner? We'll get more of that and if we did that already maybe we can get a business model so you can go there and give them your vacuum cleaner and they get rid of the cloud and I don't know yet whether they'll visit your homes or whether you buy them from there or via remote access or maybe 
little prostheses, prosthetics. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's something to it, to that. And the last thing, while it, the, quite a few bitcoins out there, where people say. You know, I think I've heard this about five times. You know, I've got a few sitting around there somewhere too, but like, you know, the drive's dead or we don't know where the drive is. is and you know, I, or there are people who say, I can't remember what the password is. So what we need is uh, unlike a, 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 hip, a hypnotizer, which is un <laughs> unlike a lawyer is an actual profession. And there's not just a d predefined wage that they earn. Yeah. I think that's it. We wish you a nice way home and a happy new year 1948. Yeah. 1984. Yeah, a very happy 1984 to you um, from the stage and from us in the translation booth. Um, this has been